a lot of the recommendations that are made for women, I think, are somewhat barbaric, and uh, you know, they definitely need some um, need some improve. They need to be improved upon. So I'm asked all the time by patients, what's the difference between personalized medicine and traditional medicine? And in traditional medicine, there's a singular approach. So you have cancer A, and for cancer A, here is a standard of care treatment. And after you go through the standard of care treatment and it doesn't work, typically there's not a plan B. There's not another option. So then patients are told, hey, there's nothing else that can be done. And so then they're convinced that, hey, there's no hope and we can't do anything else. Now, I want to contrast that in a personalized approach that we have at Causenta. We're going to measure all kinds of details within your body. And we're going to find lots of areas that we can actually improve your health. And then indirectly, by improving those areas, we're going to help you do a better job at fighting cancer. So where someone else would say, hey, there's nothing that could be done, we're going to say, hey, there's lots of opportunity here to improve your health and make sure that you have a better quality of life so that you're able to function and, and live life under your own terms and not just waste away in a bed in hospice somewhere and watch everything go by you as, as time passes on. So if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer and you're looking to get help, I strongly encourage you to go to Cosenta.com and fill out the form at the bottom of the page and find out for yourself how we can help you. We're here broadcasting from Chicago, connecting with Dr. Tom in Arizona. Dr. Tom is Thomas Incladon. He is the founder and CEO of Causenta Wellness and the Causenta Cancer Treatment Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. From working with NFL, MLB, MMA, world-class athletes, and even the White House, Dr. Tom's reputation for personalized medicine and cutting-edge technologies have put him on the map for caring for some of the most powerful people in the world, making him him one of the most sought after healthcare professionals of our time. And he's coming to us from Scottsdale, Arizona, where he set up Causenta Cancer Treatment Center. And their mission is to kill cancer once and for all with minimal side effects. What we do is we talk with Dr. Tom and we ask him questions about cancer, fighting cancer, preventing cancer, sometimes general wellness questions. And uh, we absolutely would love to take your questions. If you have a question that you would like to get into Dr. Tom, you can text it in. And all you have to do is text us the word health on your mobile phone to 72000. If you're in the United States and Canada, text health to 72000 and get your question in, or uh, we can definitely set you up to get future and current episodes of Ask Dr. Tom. Uh, if you're outside the United States, there is a special number you can use, and that's posted in the comments. And uh, if you know somebody who should be taking a look or listen to the show, please share this with them on Facebook or tag them in the comments below. Today, we're uh, first off, how you doing, Dr. Tom? This is round two. We had a little, we took an intermission. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> and me too. And uh, so now uh, we, we did a couple other topics. We're going to dive right in. And some of these are, are heavy topics. And this one is no different. We're talking uh, today about triple negative breast cancer. And this is the first time I'm hearing about triple negative breast cancer. I can imagine that some women out there uh, are also wondering, what is it? So, uh, Dr. Tom, what is triple negative breast cancer? So, uh, you know, triple negative breast cancer is when a woman has a diagnosis of uh, breast cancer that is negative for an estrogen receptor, it's negative for progesterone receptor or receptors, and negative for another receptor called a HER2 or HER2. So you got three different common receptors that are found in breast cancer, but when all three are negative, then you get the uh, further delineation of triple negative breast cancer. And um, it's, a, it's a type of cancer that it gets um, a lot more fear out of women, uh, or maybe couples, for example, if the husband finds out his wife has it, because there's a, a lot of uh, concern um, you know, as far as uh, what happens long term if you have a triple negative breast cancer.
This is Ask Dr. Tom, and you can grab episodes of Ask Dr. Tom at askdrtom.com. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Incledon, and uh, the topic today is triple negative breast cancer. How common is this? I mean, we hear, unfortunately, today about breast cancer in general, and it seems to be uh, the general breast cancer seems to be more common than ever, but how common is triple negative breast cancer? So um, about 10% of the women with breast cancer have triple negative breast cancer. Um, one of the things I'd like to maybe insert that doesn't directly answer that question or maybe just a bit gives a little bit more of an overview is that, um, you know, in most cancers, the, uh, the way they're treated is typically some form of chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. You don't normally say remove everything. Yet with breast cancer, there's kind of like this um, approach where, hey, if you have this cancer, Instead of just removing a lump, uh, you know, women out of fear and reactive thinking may say, remove both my breasts or remove uh, my ovaries uh, because of the concern about, you know, the, um, what could happen later on. The problem with that approach, though, is it doesn't address circulating cancer cells in the blood, and some of those cells may form tumors elsewhere in the body. So a lot of the recommendations that are made for women, I think, are somewhat barbaric, and uh, you know they definitely need some um, need some improve. They need to be improved upon because surveys of women, where they ask women what would they like, the majority of women say, "I would prefer something that doesn't damage my breasts and damage my ovaries," which is kind of common sense. You know, imagine a man. If he has testicular cancer and the doctor goes, hey, we got to remove everything, you know, they're not going to be very, uh, you know, anxious to get that done or confident about the outcome afterwards. With uh, the concern about triple negative breast cancer, though, is that if uh, the outcomes after five years are not as good as other types of can breast cancer, and so, or different types of breast cancer, so let's say if you have uh, one of the other receptors positive or all three positive, so there's a lot of fear that develops, like people look at numbers and the numbers say, hey, if you have this, it's really bad, it's really, you know, you're gonna suffer or you're not gonna make it. So it, it makes uh, people do things reactively. And what I would share is that there are still lots of options. And that's the main point I just wanna make is that, you know, it's not like a death sentence. It's not like, you know, you're being locked away in a jail cell, you never get in the key again. This is something where you just gotta have a little more strategy involved, and then you can figure out, hey, there's something here that, that resonates with, for me, that I feel comfortable uh, you know, um, going down that treatment path, if you will. This is Ask Dr. Tom, a show where we talk with Dr. Thomas Incledon, and we ask him questions about health and well-being and wellness and the cancer-fighting work they do at the Causenta Cancer Treatment Center in Scottsdale, Arizona, where their mission is to kill cancer once and for all with minimal side effects. The topic today is a new topic for me, triple negative breast cancer. But uh, one of the themes of Ask Dr. Tom and some of the segments we do here is rather than asking Dr. Google or WebMD or whatever, you should ask Dr. Tom. One of the things that, that you could come across when you Google like I did and, and the other folks as part of this team it did is this connection between BRCA1 gene mutation and triple negative breast cancer. Obviously, people that are going through this experience or diagnosis have a little bit more insight into what that might mean. But what is the connection between the BRCA1 gene mutation and triple negative breast cancer, or if any? Sure. So what happens is um, if, uh, let's say, a woman feels a lump in her breast and she goes to see a physician, they may order a biopsy specimen. That biopsy specimen would be sent out to a lab, and that lab would do some type of uh, pathology workup where they're gonna look to see the types of uh, genes that are present. And um, if someone has a BRCA1 gene, the likelihood of, uh, let's say, their natural genetics having a BRCA1 gene, and that could lead to an increased incidence of a triple negative type of cancer. So the connection is, if you, have, you as a woman have a BRCA1 gene, it increases the likelihood that you may develop a triple negative breast cancer. And that triple negative breast cancer 
has lower survival rates, you know, five years after treatment. So the concern may be there's a higher risk of death can, with that type of cancer using standard conventional treatment methods. We're talking with Dr. Tom, and we're talking about a form of breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer, and what it means and, and what you can do about it. African-American women are, according to, to statistics, are three times more likely to develop tri triple negative breast cancer than Caucasian women. Is that true, and do we know why? Yeah, so there's definitely an increased uh, likelihood of certain segments of the population. So um, not only is it African-American women, but it's also Latina women have uh, an increased likelihood of developing a triple negative breast cancer. Now, um, up until somewhat recently, they weren't really sure why. They were trying to look at, you know, different reasons. Um, but very recently, there's a, a, a molecule that was discovered in the nucleus of, the, uh, of certain cells, and it's called an N, lowercase n, and then KIFC1. And you could just look at it as a molecular diagnostic marker. So basically, you might say there's a sort of a protein that's been uncovered, and it's higher in African-American women. So that indicates then there may be some relationship between that protein and the likelihood of developing a triple negative breast cancer. Uh, there's other factors that may be linked to that, uh, the socioeconomic status, um, obesity rates, those are also different in African-American women and Latina women versus Caucasian women. So um, at this point, in terms of uh, tools, it looks like there's a lot of attention going towards targeting that molecule to see if you could interfere with it and then change in the likelihood of the progression of the cancer. If you test positive for the BRCA1 gene mutation, what are your options if you're a female and, and, and you want to prevent the development of triple negative breast cancer? So we'll start off with, the, say, the, the standard of care conventional options would be, um, so you could have a mastectomy where there's a removal of the breasts. You could have a oophorectomy, which is there's a removal of the ovaries. So those would be surgical options that are available to women. Now, some people might say, you know, um, hey, I'm so worried about getting cancer. I want to just, you know, if I got this gene, I want to just remove these tissues from the body so likelihood of me developing cancer is much less. Other people, other women may say, you know what, uh, I don't want my body to be disposable and I don't want to just remove these parts, you know, uh, so casually. I think that's a, those, that surgical stuff, you know, the surgical strategies, that's a conversation each woman has to look at individually and maybe have it with our family and, and our um, oncology team. As far as non-surgical options, there are quite a bit. Um, there's all kinds of uh, options available. And so what I would uh, you know, ask women to do is find out what those options are uh, because uh, it may require, it, it may be a better outcome for them because the problem with a surgical intervention is that there's no way you could know, you can't remove cancer cells in the blood through surgery. So then there may be something left over and you might still develop the cancer anyway. Uh, so that may not be a good fit if you think about that. One thing I'll share is that many times women are told part of the story when they go in for surgery and then after surgery they're told, okay, now that you're done with surgery, we're gonna have you on drugs for life. And so what I would encourage women is before you do a surgery, like removing a you know, double mastectomy or nephrectomy, is kind of get the whole, you know, like a survey of the whole scene, meaning like, what do I do before, what happens during the surgery, and then what do I have to do after the surgery? So they can make sure they're comfortable with that approach. Because what I've seen is a lot of women say, you know, I went through this process and now I realize this wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. It's very different. And they're kind of, uh, I wouldn't say stuck, but they're kind of locked in a path that they're not comfortable with. When you mentioned this um, triple negative breast cancer, and, and we started talking about it, and then and you shared this, the information about the BRCA1 gene mutation, I started thinking 
you know, this this kind of sounds familiar. This was in the headlines a little bit. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the gene that Angelina Jolie was tested for. And I believe she at least publicly said I wasn't there with her at the hospital, but hmm. said that, that her decision was to do this double mastectomy in order to prevent it. So are you suggesting that that may not be the best way to go for 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 women? Yeah, because what happens is, um, one, it's a, it's assuming that you won't get cancer, you know, and you're removing a body part or, or multiple body parts, if you will, to reduce the risk of cancer. And there could be other factors besides, uh, you know, like if those, uh, if some of those cancer cells have spread to the blood already, then just removing the body parts won't really produce the solution that you're looking for. The other aspect about that is that we know that certain combinations of natural substances enhance the kill rate of chemotherapy against cancer cells and, and they're safe, meaning that um, it minimizes side effects and symptoms that people have afterwards. So if you were to know, hey, I could take a few pills and I'm getting rid of the cancer in my body and later on it worked versus hey, I'm gonna remove my breasts and ovaries, and oh, afterwards, I still have to take pills. Like, it kind of makes the surgery seem almost unnecessary for some cases. So that's why I suggest, you know, people really talk it through and find out sort of the, the pros and cons all the way through. Now, if you see, uh, if you go into a cancer treatment center that only offers, you know, surgery, radiation, and chemo, well, then that's the only options they're going to make available to you. So then you won't know about other options that are available. This is the Ask Dr. Tom show. We're talking with Dr. Tom about triple negative breast cancer and the now the correlation between the BRCA1 gene mutation and uh, that particular form of cancer and what you can do to prevent it, what you can do um, to treat it. Um, why, Dr. Tom, why is triple negative breast cancer resistant to common oral medications that other breast cancers respond to normally? So um, the reason why uh, certain medications don't work for a woman diagnosed with a triple negative breast cancer is those medications may be targeted to an estrogen receptor or a progesterone receptor or a HER2 receptor. So if the medication is targeted to something the woman doesn't have, it, it's unlikely to produce a beneficial result or an outcome. So, um, so you can't just like throw a drug at someone and hope for the best. There's got to be a strategy and there's got to be a rationale behind it. So when women don't, let's say women that have a triple negative breast cancer and they can't use, let's say, the traditional medications used for breast cancer, they have lots of options. Um, so for example, there are different types of uh, chemotherapeutics referred to as taxanes. There are various platinum compounds and there's monoclonal antibodies. And there's different natural substances that could be utilized in conjunction with those substances that appear to improve the outcomes dramatically. And uh, so my point is that uh, women aren't limited as far as what can be done. It just requires a team that's willing to test them, to monitor them, and then figure out if something's working, then keep doing it. And if it's not working, what they will change or transition to to make sure that the woman beats that cancer and it's no longer any signs of cancer in her body. We're talking with Dr. Tom. Dr. Thomas Incledon is the founder and CEO of the Causenta Cancer Treatment Center in Scottsdale, Arizona, where their mission is to kill cancer once and for all with minimal side effects. And we're talking about triple negative breast cancer. A lot of people may more, be most familiar with it because uh, in the news, Angelina Jolie was um, found that she had this BRCA1 gene mutation, and as a preemptive measure, she got a double mastectomy. As we're talking with Dr. Tom, and we're learning more and more about what you could and couldn't do, or should or shouldn't do, or might want to consider, we're, we're learning about that gene mutation and what you can uh, choose to do as, as other options. Uh, one of the things that uh, they do at Causenta Wellness is they institute and implement alternative therapies. Uh, are there other treatment alternatives for triple negative breast cancer patients that, that perhaps you implement at Causenta that would work for, for women that are diagnosed? 
Yeah, there sure are. I mean, so first, what I would say is that um, when we do a workup of a case, we look at other things going on in that person's body. So, for example, do they have coagulation issues, meaning their blood has got a high potential for clotting? Um, do you have inflammatory markers like homocysteine, or lipoprotein A, or some other uh, things like an erythrocyte sedimentation rate, or CRP markers that are elevated? We try to address those markers uh, through exercise and nutrition, and then we follow up and test those markers so we could verify they are improving for that patient. And if they don't improve, then we try something different. It's that straightforward. So one way or another, we're gonna find something for that individual that will help them. Now in terms of cancer fighting, um, part of that it depends on you know, you know, the, the uniqueness of that situation for that individual. But as an example, um, we could look at tools, for example, if a, a woman has trouble managing her glucose levels and they're running high and exercise alone and diet changes are controlling that glucose. Then we could look at tools like metformin, uh, if someone wants, let's say, an inexpensive drug option. If someone says, look, I don't want to use medication for whatever reason, we could look at natural strategies like alpha-lipoic acid with berberine and hydroxycitric acid or even Genema sylvester. Those are other options to control glucose levels in the blood. Uh, if someone says, hey, um, uh, I'm, not, um, I'm, I'm not comfortable with doing a fully chemotherapeutic regimen, um, we can look at ways of creating some um, alternative medical options for them that we can test for them. And if they see their tumors are shrinking or their cancer activity is going down, then they know to stick with it. And if it doesn't work, then they know, hey, I better try a more... Uh, aggressive regimen involving some chemotherapeutic agents because from our perspective at the end of the day we want results for our patients and so you know we're going to have lots of tools that we could look at and explore with each individual. We're talking with Dr. Tom. This is the Ask Dr. Tom show and this particular form of cancer is is something that young women should be aware of I think especially as Dr. Tom sharing with us the higher risk uh, among Latina women and African American women for this BRCA1 gene mutation. So, based on what we're learning from you, Dr. Tom, and, and what you know about triple negative breast cancer in young women, um, if if you're a young woman that has tested positive for the BRCA1 gene mutation, what are her options for preventing the development of of triple negative breast cancer? So, um, well, first let's look at some risks that you know are, are present. So uh, some of the risks are age, so it tends to be more likely in women less than 40. Um, second is uh, African-American or Latina descent. Um, and then the third one would be presence of the BRCA1 gene. So those things are typically things you can't control, right, for reducing your risk. So now if we look at other things we can control, one is obesity, so excess body fat appears to contribute to inflammatory load on the body. And what you don't hear a lot of times is um, as uh, the United States as a country, you know, our obesity rates are going almost vertical. Uh, many states now have way more than one third of the people in the state are clinically obese, which means they have greater than 30% body fat. Years ago, we would think of body fat as kind of like, oh, I got extra weight, and I just got to work harder to walk. And then we started finding that the fat cells, as they get bigger, they produce more inflammatory molecules that could damage us. So body fat is a significant threat to our health once it gets too high. So that means you know, we can control, if we can control body fat through movement, and um, careful planning of our eating, that's gonna be a huge stride. What you don't hear so much sometimes is that um, alcohol intake has some unique patterns or relationships to cancer. Uh, red wine with the meal seems to be okay, but 
any alcohol, including red wine, just drinking it, let's say, on empty stomach or you know, without food involved, it appears to increase risk for cancers overall. And whether that's because of uh, DNA damage or some other reason, it's unclear. But one of the interesting things alcohol does is it throws off glucose metabolism, it throws off fat metabolism. So the body appears to burn the alcohol more, more readily than sugar and fat. So now the sugar and fat store in different places around the body. So, and then we know that there are lots of phytonutrients that nature provides that reduces our risk for cancer. So it comes back to, you know, eating colorful fruits and vegetables again. And if I had to throw in some things that maybe aren't so clear, you know, from research, but I would say just kind of makes sense uh, to me based on studying people at our center. Um, sleep is a big factor that uh, I think many people underappreciate a good night's rest. They just wake up saying, I'm tired, but they're not thinking about all the inflammation trapped in their tissue that they can't see, touch, or feel. And then staying properly hydrated. We know that there appears to be more uh, inflammation for people that are dehydrated. So you got, you know, as a quick short checklist, sleep right or get enough sleep so you wake up feeling ready to tackle the world, eating enough fruits and vegetables so that you're making sure you feel real good, um, making sure you're moving every day, at least 30 minutes or longer, and then making sure you're doing things to control alcohol intake and minimize body fat gain. So, you know, the way I look at um, body fat is if you're getting fatter, just move more. You know, <laughs> it's that simple. That's a good, that's a good way to think of it. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Tom often mentions in virtually every conversation about every cancer, not just the ones that are, uh, seem to be focused on young women and uh, high risk categories uh, are, it seem to be young women for this particular cancer and this, um, this gene are uh, younger women with uh, Latina descent or African American descent. But no matter what, Dr. Tom mentions that you should be, we should be eating a wide variety of colorful fruits and vegetables and uh, nutrient dense food, et cetera. It's, it's easier to hear that than it is to actually do it. And so uh, one thing that they've put together, Dr. Tom has put together with the folks at Cosenta is this rainbow diet chart that will help you do that. If you would like a copy, it's free of the rainbow diet chart to help you eat a better variety of foods that are going to help you be healthier, live longer, sleep better, et cetera. Just text the word health to 7200. Just take out your phone and text the word health to 7200 if you're in the U.S. and Canada. If you're outside the U.S. and Canada, uh, you can text the word health to plus one three one five nine three zero zero three zero zero. We're talking with Dr. Tom, and the topic today on Ask Dr. Tom is triple negative breast cancer. We we understand that there's a high risk among younger women. Uh, Dr. Tom, what symptoms should young ladies be looking for and be aware of to help with early diagnosis of triple negative breast cancer? Sure. So. Uh a lump or mass in the breast would be one. Uh, breast pain or tenderness would be two. And three would be a, a nipple that turns uh, inward or um, has some discharge. And um, the uh, American Cancer Society and other groups have different uh, brochures and um, online resources that you could download, for example, for women to learn or understand how to do their own self you know, uh, like breast tests or examinations, if you will, so that way they could see something when it's smaller and then make sure that they get an appropriate mammogram or some other type of test uh, from a competent, you know, um, therapist or some sort of radiologist. Now, sometimes women would say, yeah, well, I don't want a mammogram. So then you do have thermograms, you have thermography machines that could also look at stuff as well in the breasts. Uh, but regardless of their personal choice, the main, uh, the main thing is that they're doing something to proactively assess what's going on with their breasts so that way if something shows up, they could take action quickly because treating something at stage one, uh, regardless if it's uh, triple negative breast cancer or some other type of breast cancer, treating it at stage one is almost a sure thing you can treat it, you know, treat it and be and it's a memory in your life you're not dealing with it but if you wait too long and now it's stage three or four 
the likelihood of treating it successfully goes down dramatically. This is uh, Ask Dr. Tom with Dr. Thomas Incledon, and the topic today is triple negative breast cancer. We've uh, pretty much covered it all, especially this, this knowledge of the BRCA1 gene mutation that got a lot of publicity because of the An Angelina Jolie decision, but uh, probably doesn't get talked about quite as much as it should have. Uh, before we move on to another topic, is there anything else that you'd like to add about triple negative breast cancer in general for, for those who might be listening or sharing this with family? Sure. One of the things that I've seen uh, happen is that um, women will come in and say, hey, I have this type of breast cancer, and they will have in their mind, you know, certain fears or treatment decisions already made up. And when I ask them how did, you know, how did this come about, it's always based on something outside their body. So they read something and now they want to do it or not do it for themselves. And the one area of caution I would say is, you know, if we were going to say what's the goal here, the goal is to kill cancer and make sure there's no more cancer cells in your body. That's the goal. And most patients say, oh yeah, I absolutely agree. I don't have anyone saying, hey, I got a different goal that has cancer. So now you say if that's your goal, well then don't we want to base our strategy off your body and what's going on inside of you? And most people would say yes to that. I haven't anyone say no. Well then when I ask them, well how did you come up with your strategy when we haven't, no one knows anything about your body yet? So the main point I would share of that kind of some, uh, short story is that find out who you are on the inside and then use that information to plan your strategy. Don't read something on the internet about what someone else did, uh, whether it worked or didn't work, because there could be various reasons why you know, a, a regimen may be better for you than it was for someone else, or it might be worse for you than someone else. So I, I had a case recently where um, a woman had a um, uh, cancer that was triple negative and was afraid of doing certain things because she had heard so much about how bad chemo is and she was worried about all these side effects and, and I said okay show me one person that you have scans on before and after that didn't you know that did some other strategy doesn't matter what that strategy is. show me one and she's like I can't find anyone everyone that says I beat my cancer naturally when she, she contacted people on the internet that had websites up and said, show me, can I see your scans for when you had cancer and now there's no cancer? Not a single person could provide her with any objective data like that. And so I, I, what I, my point with her doing that exercise is that you can't always believe everything you read on the internet. And at the end of the day, you, each individual has to be accountable and responsible to themselves for their own health and part of that um, accountability is making sure you're using facts to drive your decision making and not using misinformation or hearsay. It's the Ask Dr. Tom show. Every week we uh, sit down with Dr. Tom and we talk about uh, health issues, cancer issues, and the work they're doing at the Causenta Cancer Treatment Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. Dr. Thomas Incledon is the founder and CEO of Causenta Wellness and the Causenta Cancer Treatment Center there in Scottsdale. From working with NFL, MLB, MMA, and world-class athletes and even the White House, his reputation of personalized medicine and cutting-edge technologies have put him on the map for caring for some of the most powerful Powerful people in the world, making him one of the most sought after healthcare professionals of our time. And if you have a question for Dr. Tom, or you'd like to get a copy of previous episodes, future episodes, the Rainbow Diet Chart, which is free and very helpful for your meal planning and, and leading your family, text the word health on your cell phone. Take it out. Standard text and data rates may apply. Uh, text the word health to the number 72000. That's the word health to 7200 in the U.S. and Canada. If you're outside the United States and the uh, in Canada, you can text plus one three one five nine three zero zero three zero zero. That's if you're outside the United States and Canada. And we will make sure that you get a link with all of the future past episodes and perhaps most importantly, the rainbow diet chart, which can help you tremendously in early prevention of any disease and, and keeping healthy in general.
My name is Margaret Bennett. I was diagnosed with breast cancer four weeks ago. I just can't let anything happen to me. I have to fix myself. I have to fix myself because I have too many people to, you know, be around for it. We met Dr. Thomas and Dr. Anderson, and I'm going to say within five minutes, all our fears were gone. My husband even says sometimes now, I'll see him walk past the office or see one of them walk past one of the rooms and he'll say, there's our hero. <laughs> Every day I say to them, I love everything they're doing. I feel so great. They ask me, how is your pain level? And I'm like, I don't have any pain. <laughs> and so like, I mean, I feel great. I feel wonderful. I don't even have to say to them, what are we gonna do about this? Because they already have a plan in place. They'll just keep thinking about mo the more they can do. What more can we do? That's all they think. It's, it's really a great place. So if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer and you're looking to get help, I strongly encourage you to go to causenta.com and fill out the form at the bottom of the page and find out for yourself how we can help you. You know, after working with a lot of athletes over the years and dealing with health issues and injuries and seeing how they approach their health, we learned a lot. Does it make sense that everyone is saying the same thing? Where's the unique approach? Where's the difference, differences in how to look at a human being and suggest something different that might help them? This is a very individualized, customized type of treatment. This is not going to be the same thing every day. This is not cookie cutter. This is not about um, having a plan in place before you ever get here, just based on your label. When we're working with patients, it should be a patient-centered model. So the patient's best interests are at heart. This is not a one-size-fits-all. This is you come in, we measure all aspects that we can possibly measure, and then we customize and tailor it directly for you. And we're constantly looking at what is the latest, most efficacious or effective way of treating those disease states. I love working for Cosenta because I see myself as a cutting edge physical therapist and Cosenta has all the world's greatest technology under one roof. I've been told that there's nothing they can do and ultimately they have exhausted their options. Um, at that same time, within 24 hours, our staff, our doctors come together and come up with a plan for that same person. To me, it's a very personal relationship, and I have been given the gift and the power and the wisdom to help them, and there's no better life than that. And we look for elements in the people that we hire that will translate out to a better patient experience when they walk through the door. So we don't really even see the patients as patients. They are their family. There is life, there is newness going on in Casenta that is forward thinking and I'm telling you what, this is probably the most exciting thing you'll ever see. It's about facilitating an environment of learning and it's learning for the patient, it's learning for the patient's body, it's learning for the patient's environment. This is more about being part of a system that's very much invested with each individual. My name is Jennifer Grantham. My name is David Schultz. Hi, I'm Larry Hellman. I'm Dr. Steven Iacoboni. My name is Dr. Matthew Zanis. I'm Dr. Christy Anderson. My name is Thomas Sinkladon, and I'm the Chief Scientific Officer. Welcome to Cosenta. So if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer and you're looking to get help, I strongly encourage you to go to causenta.com and fill out the form at the bottom of the page and find out for yourself how we can help you.